Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to find the moment about any arbitrary axis, even when the axis does not go to the origin. So here's some arbitrary line in space. We have the x, y, and z axis. We have some point in space that is a distance r away from the origin. So here's the origin. And there's some force acting on it in any arbitrary direction. What is the moment of this force acting at that point about this axis right here? The way to do that is, first of all, to pick any arbitrary point on that line. It really doesn't matter which one it is. You always will get the exact same result. So we'll pick an arbitrary point, label it B, and we then will draw an act, uh, a position vector from B to A. And so this would be R, uh, B, A, from B to A. And I'll draw a little arrow here. There we go. So, so this is the position vector from that arbit arbitrary point on the axis to the point where the force is acting. Then we also need a unit vector along the line from B to L. So let's call this the unit vector right here. And so that would be magnitude 1 in the direction of the line from B to L. We can then say that the moment about the line from B to L, which is a nice representative way of saying along that arbitrary axis, we say that the moment from B to L is therefore, therefore equal to the unit vector along that axis multiplied via a scalar product times the position vector from that point to the point where the force is acting. So from R, B to A, multiplied via vector product with the force. And that will be the moment. Now, how do we express R from B to A? Well, that can be written as, as follows. We can say that R from B to A is equal to R sub A minus R sub b. In other words, the position vector from the origin to a and minus the position vector from r to b. So then we have to draw a position vector from r to b, which is right here. So this is r sub b. And now notice that r from a, r sub a minus r sub b should equal the vector from b to a. Let's see if that is correct. So first of all, if we draw a vector from, or, from the origin to a, and then we add the negative vector from R to B. So the negative vector would be the inverse vector, would be the upside down vector. Let me use the blue color like this. So this here would be considered the R of, that would be minus R sub B, that would be the inverse of vector RB. So if we add vector from here to there, to there so we'll call that vector R sub A. I'll relabel that vector right there. So this is called R sub A, this is called R sub B. This is called R minus R sub B because it's the inverse of R sub B. If we now add this vector to this vector, we will get this vector right here. And so that vector would be R minus the R sub A minus R sub B, which is the same as this vector right there. This is the exact same vector, just in a different location. So this does indeed check out. So that means we can write this expression as follows. M BL is equal to the unit vector along the arbitrary axis multiplied via a scalar product times the quantity R sub A minus R sub B. That would be the vector from B to A. Multiplied via a cross product or a vector product times the force acting at A. And then, of course, if you want to then write it into the matrix format, this would be equal to the magnitude of the unit vector in the x direction times the magnitude of the unit vector in the y direction times the magnitude of the unit vector in the z direction, which are basically what we call the direction cosines of this arbitrary axis. So those are the direction cosines multiplied times r sub a x minus r sub b x. So it would be the difference of their x coordinates r sub a in the y direction minus r sub a in the y, uh, r sub b in the y direction, the difference of their y coordinates, and this would be r sub a in the z direction minus r sub b in the z direction, the difference of their z components. In other words, it would be the difference in the x components of a and b, the difference in the y components, and the difference in the z components. Those would be the three quantities right there. And then finally, the component of the force in the x direction, the component of the force in the y direction, and the component of the force in the z direction. And that is how you find the moment 
of a force acting on any arbitrary point about any arbitrary axis, even if the axis does not go to origin. And that's how we find that moment.